the Lord has blessed me with the word on today. And that word uh, ministered to me first, as it normally does when God gives a word. It ministers to the person that is giving the word first. So that they, you can know that I deal with the same things every day, you know, and God gets me through it because he's awesome like that. Amen. I'm going to take these off because I don't need them to read, praise God, but I need them for driving. Y'all don't want me out on the road without them. <coughs> but um, first and foremost, I want to uh, thank God for allowing me to be before you on this morning. I thank him that I don't take preaching his word um, lightly at all. Um, I honor his word, and I love the Lord. Um, and if I were to give this message a topic, it would call be a fierce person of God's word. And we're going to get into that word fierce and really talk about it and let you know exactly what that means. But first, I want to pray. God, thank you for allowing me to get before your people, God. One more time, God, I thank you for the word that you have blessed me with. Lord, you bring the word forth through me. Set me aside, God. You do the work. You do the things that you want and say the things that you want to come forth, God. I honor you on today, God, and I praise you. In Jesus' name, I do pray and give you thanks. Amen. First, turn to 2 Timothy uh, 3. And 16. So when Pastor was up here and he was speaking and saying the different things he was saying, I was like, oh, back up now. Get out of my message. I was like, really? So I'm sitting out there just grinning like, okay, Lord, that's confirmation. You gave me this word, and I know he did. Let me know when you're there. Say, I got it. Second Timothy. 3, 16 through 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. <coughs> so his word thoroughly equips us, okay? And so <clears throat> if we're going to be fierce people of God's word, then we have to know his word. But first thing is we have to know our enemy. Now, the devil will try to do all kinds of things. He'll try to get you to believe his lies. Mm -hmm. And that's all he does is spit forth lies. Lies, lies, and more lies. So the first part of this is to know your enemy. <clears throat> we are important to God. We represent a threat to the enemy. So let me tell you something very important right from the jump. The devil is a liar and the father of lies. Do not, under any circumstances, listen to the lies that he tells you. He wants to distract you and keep you from reaching your full potential in God. He wants to render you helpless and make you feel unworthy and unwanted. The word of God tells us in John 8 and 44. We can, you can go ahead and turn there or you don't have to, but I will. Because I marked all of my pages. <laughs> and it's um, the second, uh, starting at the second sentence. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. For he is a liar and the father of lies. Devil is a liar. Do not, under any circumstances, believe the lies that he tries to tell you. God has armed you with the most powerful sword to fight the evil one, his word. Through his word, you learn to discern the truth about Satan, 
Christ and God's plan he has for you. Believe it, every single one of you, God has a plan for you and for your life. Listen to what he has to say. Do the things that God gives you to do. First Peter, um, oh, look, God's word is trustworthy. That's the other thing that I want to say. His word is not only just his word, but it's trustworthy. You can believe everything that's in it because everything is for you in his word. So First Peter 5 and 8. I got quite a few scriptures this morning, so y'all just go with me. Uh, why? Because we're going to be fierce people of God's word. Amen. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To God be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. So he's letting us know that, yes, the enemy will come. And, yes, he will try to do the things that he's going to try to do. But if we are in God's word, then we don't have to worry about it. He can't do anything. All we have to do is quote the scripture and let him know that it is written that whatever God says is what it is. I know that there has been times in my life where the enemy has broken me so much that I just felt like I wasn't worthy. I had no place at this church. I had no place in my family. I had no place anywhere. And I was listening to his lies. I was listening to him. And let me tell you, God's word helped me through that time in my life. And I'm going to tell you, it wasn't that long ago, okay? He comes at all different areas, all different times of your life, especially when you're going through something. That's when he brings forth the lies. And that's all he can do is bring forth lies. He is the father of lies. Don't listen to him. If you know the Lord, Jesus Christ, you have what it takes to face your adversary. Fierce people of God know his word, and they know their enemy that they are fighting. So you have to dig into that scripture. You have to know that anything he brings, we have to counter it with the word of God. But before you engage in the battle, make sure you know all about your enemy. He can never be trusted. Remember, he is the father of lies. The only way to rid yourself of his lies is to replace it with the truth of the word. Sometimes I get a little bit ahead of myself and I, I get excited. And I know I've already said that, but it must mean that y'all needed to hear it again. He's the father of lies, and the truth is not in him. Here's an example. Let's go to um, Genesis 3 and 1. Now, this is where he first started with his lies. Now, the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Lie. He didn't say that. He said one specific tree. That's what God said. So what the enemy tries to do is he will twist the word of God. He will twist anything to get you to believe his lie. He is a liar and the father of lies. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat, nor shall you touch it, lest ye die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. Lie number two, 
you will not surely die. He's still just lying, lying, lying to get his point across, to get you to believe what he said. That's not okay. It's not okay. Then the serpent said to the woman, oh, I, I read that, excuse me. Uh, I was, I, okay, I was, okay, thank you. <laughs> For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Lie number what? Number three. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it, is, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate also. So these are all these lies that Satan has started from the very beginning. So don't get me wrong. I'm not judging Eve by any means. No, she should not have eaten of the fruit. She should not have listened to his mess. That's what it is, is his mess. But he's so crafty. He will distort God's word. His only, he distorted his only command to Eve. And he promised her things that seemed good. Wisdom and knowledge, those are two things that seem good. But that's when the enemy comes in and he puts a twist on it and makes it sound better than what it is and makes you try to believe the, the lie that he has. He seduced Eve with his lies and by the desire to become great. Here's the thing. He didn't even have the authority to make her great. Only God can make us great. So he didn't even have the authority. So he's acting out of character anyways. He's not God, and he cannot do the things that God does. He is a liar. Now, um, like I said, don't get me wrong. I'm not judging Eve because it could have been me. Amen. It could have been you. Amen. Technically, we have all eaten of the forbidden fruit. We have made our desires the ruler of our lives instead of God's life-giving words by allowing ourselves to sin and do things that are contrary to the word of God. Instead of focusing on God's command, which would have ensured her safety and comfort, Eve was enticed by Satan's claim that he could be powerful, or excuse me, that she could be powerful and wise. Nobody is more powerful or wise, wiser than God is. And so we'll never reach that place. We'll never be as good as God is. So why even try? Don't listen to his lies. He is the father of lies, and the truth is not in him. She looked to herself for the truth instead of God's word. She made a decision based on selfish desire rather than obedience to God. Excuse me. Now, how many times have we given in to something that makes us feel good only to realize that we ha are left with feelings of guilt and shame? Does that sound familiar? Exactly. We've all done it. The thing is, here's the good news. Here's the good part of this. Even if we do fall, even if we do mess up, and even if we succumb to the enemy's lies, God is always there ready to forgive us if we repent. We have to repent and ask God for our forgiveness so that he can forgive us, and we can pick right up where we are and keep on trucking, keep on moving in God. Become the person that God has for you to become. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. Know your enemy. Know his tactics. When he tries to get you to believe his lies, respond to it with scripture. That's what Jesus did, and I'm going to show you. Go to Matthew 4 and 1. Thank you, Lord, for letting me know you got there. You may beat me there. 
<laughs> Four and one. Look, I done marked it w- everywhere I'm supposed to be, and I keep forgetting to just go to the little paper. That's yeah. Mm-hmm. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward, he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. So here he is bringing his lies, you know, and not necessarily a lie, but this time, but deception. And deception is a lie, and a lie is deception. So we can interchange the two. But he answered, talking about Jesus, and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. See how he came back at the devil with scripture, knowing what he's supposed to do, knowing what God can do and how powerful he is? Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written. Now he's going to have the audacity and nerve to try to use the word of God against the word of God. Y'all got that? Jesus, the word of God. Okay. So he says, he shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. What did Jesus say? It is written again. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. The devil is, thinks he's slick and thinks he can come at God with his own word. No. Mm-mm. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and, and their glory. And he said to him, all these things will I give to you <laughs> if you will fall down and worship me. Here he is again, trying to use the word of God and then twisting it. There is no way that Jesus is going to bow to the enemy. No way on this earth that Jesus is going to bow to the enemy. Then Jesus said, he just got downright (laughs) rank with him. He said, look, I'm tired of you. Away with you, Satan. That's commandment. That is control. That is having power. Get behind me, Satan. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. And guess what? Bluefoot had to go. He had to leave. He can't handle our God. He had the audacity and the nerve. To try to come at God. Come on now. Y'all know the kids say these days, don't come for me. Don't come for Jesus. He knows what to say. He knows how to bring the scripture and tell the enemy, you got to go. You can't tempt me. So the second part of this that we have to come to is we have to know the word. So being in your scripture, being in your word is what's going to prepare you for the things to come. God has equipped each and every one of us with the absolute best weapon, the word, the Bible. If we grow in the knowledge of Christ, the truth of his word, we will be transformed into true disciples. The power of scripture will sustain you during times of desperation and despair. The darkest of your circumstances cannot overpower the life-giving light of the Bible, God's word, your weapon of truth. Now go to Hebrews, and this is where pastor started, you know, stepping off into my (laughs) message. I'm like, hold up. Hebrews 4 and 12. Okay, I 
find out how many of them in there. I got to get to the right one. Close. Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing evil even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Move down to 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confessions. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy Mercy. and find grace to hold in time of need. So here the devil is trying to come at God's best, his best creation, and try to tempt him and try to get him to bow to him. Not so. It will not happen. Not ever. God leaves no stone unturned. Every bit of darkness will be shown with the light of his word. There's absolutely nothing that you can or should keep hidden from God. He knows your thoughts. He knows what you truly need. Trust him with that. The word produces fruit. No part of your time in God's word will be wasted. Because I know that there's been plenty of times where I will get into the word and I'm like, okay, I'm getting to read. And then next thing I know, I'm I'm waking up because I have fallen asleep. (laughs) But I fell asleep with the word of God in my mind and in my hands. But no time that we spend with God is wasted. There may be times that you read it And you have no idea, no idea whatsoever of what he is trying to tell you. But have faith that you are still engaging with God's word and it may be equipping you for something you have not yet experienced. His word does not go forth void. It goes out and it accomplishes the things that it is supposed to. The things that he sends for it to accomplish, it will do just that. So no time that you spend in God's word is not worth it. He is preparing you for something that is to come. That's just how much God loves us and cares for us. Now, the third part of this is to live God's word. So we have to know our enemy. We have to know the word. And now we have to live the word. So putting it into action. Now is the time to discipline yourself in the word so you can skillfully and expertly handle all the enemy may throw at you. A true warrior of the word of God must learn how to handle your sword until it feels like, now listen to this, until it feels like an extension of your own body. So you must pour yourself into God's word so that it becomes an extension of you. So when the enemy comes with the lies that he tells us, you have the word to back up everything that he says, everything in his word God has for you, for it to be a part of you so that you can keep the devil at bay and let him know that he does not have any room here, in this place, in this place. He has no room. When you live out the word of God, you are transformed, equipped, and empowered to live as a disciple of Christ. Now let's truly understand what is meant by being a fierce person 
of God's word. <clears throat> the F in fierce stands for final, meaning that we are to let the word of God be the final authority in our lives. God's word takes precedence over everything. Let it be the final deciding factor in all things. Go to Romans 15 and 4. So what I'm going to do is, with each piece of the fierce, I'm going to give you a scripture to back it up so that you know God ain't playing. He means this. He wants you to get this in you. So the F is for final. Uh, Romans 15 and 4. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we, through the patience of comfort of the scripture, might have hope. Okay? So that's the F. The I stands for internalize. Go to Philippians 4 and 8. Memorize and meditate on the word of God so that you can internalize it. The more you internalize it, the more equipped and ready you are to face your enemy. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Meditate on the word of God. You need to be able to face your enemy when the time comes because trust me, he's going to come and he's going to keep coming. But as long as you have the word of God, you don't have to worry about him doing anything to you. The next is the E. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it stands for engage. Go ahead and turn to 2 Timothy. Oh, we've already read that. But go ahead and turn to 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. You must dive into the word. And remember, quantity is not always quality when it comes to reading the Bible. So many people think, oh, I got to read at least four to five chapters tonight so that I can know the word of God. I don't, I don't retain like that <laughs> at all. <laughs> I can read two or three chapters and be like, well, I just read. I don't know what I just read. But reading mass quantities of the scripture without taking the time to meditate and seek what the Lord is saying to you does little good for your spiritual growth. One verse of scripture believed and obeyed consistently can transform a life. God will speak to you if you listen. So I'm not saying don't read a couple of chapters a night, but what I am saying is to dive into it meditate on it, truly understand what God is excuse me, trying to give you at that time. And if you don't get anything, it didn't go void because it's probably for something later on that's going to go on in your life, and God is preparing you. Look at how wonderful God is, how awesome he is, how much he loves us, that he will prepare us for things before they even come. That's what kind of God he is. Is anybody at the second Philippian? Everybody? Anybody want to read it? No? Okay. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Look at God. The R is for response. After reading or studying God's word, the natural response would be a call to action. 
There are so many responses to God's word that you might encounter. Let God lead you. Go to James 1 and 22. But be doers of the word, putting it into action, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he is. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. So don't just be a hearer just reading the word, but study it. Be a doer of the word. Apply it to your life. Let the enemy know that you are serious about the life that you have in Christ. And that you can stand against him in anything that comes your way. C is for community. You are created for community. Find people in your life that know the word of God and can help you work through it. Hebrews 10 and 24 through 25. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. Wait a minute. Um, Well, I just went to 23. Let's read 23 too. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So we are to come together, to get together. If you don't know the word, if you don't understand the word, give with somebody that knows the word, someone that is very, not just versed in the word, but they study the word of God. And if you need the help, get with somebody. And do not forget to bring yourself to church. Amen? Amen. Bring yourself to church. The last thing is the E, and that means that you are now equipped. Equipped with everything you need to face your enemy. Everything you need to face your enemy. 2 Peter 1 and 3. Do not let your adornment be merely outward, arranging the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. For in this manner... I think I marked the wrong one. I'm sorry, y'all. I, that's, I'm still in First Peter. What is wrong with me? I'm sorry. Second Peter, one and three. <laughs> I apologize, y'all. All right. They say all good. Okay. I hope that I move past them. Okay. I'm there now. 
as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. God has given us everything we need. He has equipped us. And the main thing, the thing that needs to become an extension of us is the word of God. And that's how we become fierce people of God's word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.